It's up to you, is Nancy Drew. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to Nancy Drew Mobile Mysteries Shadow Ranch. We are going to start chapter number six. Chapter six, The Lost Mine. In the previous chapter, Bess, George, and Nancy found half of Dirk Valentine's treasure map. Bess scrutinizes the old map. A hand-drawn trail winds through crudely drawn mountains and streams until it abruptly stops at the paper's torn edge. Bess lets out a frustrated sigh. What good is half of the map? I guess it's better than no map at all, George offers. Not by much, Bess says, handing the map back to Nancy. Any idea how to find the rest of this map? We may have our work cut out for us, Nancy replies. If this half was hidden so well that it took over 100 years to find it, I'm guessing that we're not just going to find the other half lying around somewhere. Looks like I got all worked up for nothing, Bess says glumly. I was really hoping to find a way to help Shadow Ranch while I was here. I thought for a second that maybe if we found that treasure... No, it's silly. Never mind. We all want to help save the ranch, George consoles, but we just might not be able to. I know, Bess responds quietly. I just really wish we could. Wishing, do do do, wishing, and times will go. If you wish long enough, wish strong enough, you'll come to know. Wishing will make it so. Nancy watches as her friend sadly folds up the map. You know, Nancy says, we still have a chance to help. I think if we keep our eyes peeled, we just might find the second half of the map. What makes you think that? Bess asks. This is a Nancy Drew game. Of course I'm going to solve the mystery. If I didn't, the game would have a horrible ending, Nancy explains. Makes sense to me, George said. Exactly, Nancy continues. But for now, it looks like you could use some cheering up and I know just the thing. What? George asks. Let's go to Polly Placer's my Polly's blah, 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 wow. Okay, let's go to Polly's Placer Mining Pavilion. Bess can pan for gold, and it just may help us understand this map a little better. Well, what are we waiting for? George asks. She, tur I mean, that was Bess. Okay, so Bess turns to George and says, "Driver, turn around and take us back to town." George grunts, "I'm not your slave, Bess." She makes a U-turn, and soon the trio is back in Tumbleweed. As they exit the car, Mary, from the Navajo craft store, approaches them. I'm so glad I ran into you, she exclaims. Mr. Mingles has gotten into my arrowhead display and hidden them in my store. All right, so let's look for arrowheads. I'm pretty sure this will give us a collectible. All right, arrowheads. Do, 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 do. One on the floor, one over there, one over there. Three more? What? Oh, I could have sworn I found them all. One more. There we go. All right, so I get the yellow rose collectible. There's a yellow rose in Texas that I am gonna see. <laughs> All right, so Nancy knocks over some sort of figurine. And yeah, I, I think that's a red herring. This snake thing doesn't have anything to do with anything. Let's go to Polly's Placer Pavilion. Nancy leads the cousins to a three-sided tent, over which hangs a sign painted in Old West letterings. Prospector Polly's Placer Mining Pavilion! As they enter the tent, a wiry woman spouting, sporting western garb and a deep tan greets them. Welcome! I'm Prospector Polly, biggest know-it-all you'll ever meet when it comes to prospecting for Placer Gold! yee haw Bess eyes the array of strange-looking antiques on display. And she asks, all this stuff was used to mine gold? You betcha, Polly replies. You got your pans, your dishwater, your drywash screens, your rocker boxes, your sluices, everything prospectors have been using for centuries in their quest to make it rich. <laughs> Polly quickly continues, but don't think this is just a museum, because it ain't. It's way better. 
What do you mean? Nancy asks. I mean, for just five dollars a piece, I'll show you how to pan for gold yourselves right here in air conditioned comfort. The woman quickly turns on a nearby fan. Then she points to a wheelbarrow. Got me a fresh supply of Stony Peak River gravel just this morning. You can pan that and you'll find gold, I guarantee it. <laughs> and you can pan as much as you want and whatever you find, you get the key. Nancy smiles to herself, remembering how during the California gold rush, which started in 1848, but obviously um, 1849 is when it really got started, hence, you know, the 49ers. During the California gold rush, con men would make money by digging holes in hillsides, sprinkling bits of gold in them, then selling these mines to unsuspecting prospectors. As if reading Nancy's mind, Polly adds, And don't go thinking I salted that gravel, cause I surely did not! <laughs> yeah! Cross my heart and hope to die! I stick a needle in my eye! Bess looks at Nancy eagerly. I've always wanted to pan for gold. Let's give it a try. Grinning, Polly accepts a $5 bill from each of the girls, then leads them over to a long, shallow basin half filled with water and gives each of them a wide metal pan. Retrieving one for herself, she uses it to scoop some gravel from the wheelbarrow into each of their pans. Gold is 19 times heavier than water, she explains, dipping her pan into the basin and letting in just enough water to submerge the gravel in her pan. So after you add some water, you're going to swirl your pan so all the gold in the pay dirt I, gave, I just gave you can just start, you know, that, oh, oh, man. Okay, well, pay dirt is soil which contains gold or other precious metals. Let's try that sentence again. So after you add some water, you're going to swirl your pan so all the gold in the pay dirt I just gave you can start settling to the bottom like this. She gently rocks and tilts her pan, then she tips it and slowly draws the edge back and forth in the basin of water. Then you're going to do like I'm doing now, so all the worthless stuff on top can just start washing away. Then you're going to do everything all over again. The woman speeds up, expertly swirling her pan, then letting more debris wash out. You're going to do that till all that's left is stuff which looks like black sand. And then you're going to start being real careful, because you know what's hiding in that black sand? She thrusts her pan towards them. The girls peer into it and see on the bottom, amid a watery smear of black sand, several flecks of gold. Oh my gosh, George exclaims, real, live, honest-to-goodness gold! Under Polly's watchful eye, the three girls begin awkwardly washing and rinsing their panfuls of pay dirt. Suddenly, Bess cries out, I found a nugget! Polly peeks into Bess's pan and shakes her head. That's pirate! Fool's gold! If you look close, you can see it's made up of itty bitty cubes! Gold comes in lumps or in tiny chips that have flaked off of the lumps, which come from the big veins of gold in the mountains, inside mountains. Eventually, all three girls find gold flecks in their pans. Polly gives each of them a small vial of water to collect them in. After about an hour or so of steady panning, the bottoms of their vials are carpeted with flakes. How much do you think the gold I've got so far is worth? Bess asks, taking a break. The woman studies her vial. Well, I'm no a-sayer, but I'd say, oh, maybe 90 cents. Bess's jaw drops. All that work and it's not even worth a dollar? The fun's in the getting, not the selling, the woman admonishes. Besides, in your next pan, you can find a nugget worth ten times that. Or gemstone or some turquoise. You never can tell. <laughs>